All right, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Havrakach Wadash. I want to give double honors to Apostle Tahar and other elders and apostles that are in the spirit whose labors we have entered into. I want to call this video not given into idleness, right? Because, uh, brothers, man, we see everything that's going on, you know, in the four corners, man. All hell is unfolding. You know, we're on the cusp of victory. We're on the cusp of Jacob's trouble. You know, our, 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 our Adawan, our king, is about to crack the skies, man. You know, and, and reveal himself, you know. So, uh, you know, as we see all these different things, like, you know, what Esau's kingdom deteriorating before our very eyes. You know, the Heavenly Fathers, you know, uh, uh, bringing our enemies down right before our very eyes. You know, what, 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 what ought we to be doing, man? You know, uh, definitely not being idle. Watching everything pass us by, you know, or, you know, I know most of us from, are, are from different tribes and, and whatnot, but we all heard that uh, that one saying, the uh, uh, what is it, uh, the devil's uh, idle mind is the devil's playground, man. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna start right here, and uh, it's at right 33. And I'm gonna start at verse uh, verse 25. It says, "If thou if thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest." But if thou let him go idle, he shall seek liberty. Yeah, so you see that, right? So if you're not working for the Heavenly Father, right? If you're not being, you know, uh, uh, being put to work, right? You're going to seek to do what? You're going to seek to, you know, get into some other stuff that's, you know, uh, contrary to, the, to to serving the Heavenly Father, right? Because, of course, you know, uh, Satan is going to, you know, enter into your mind and make you want to do this or, you know, make you want to go back into the world or, you know things that you used to be occupied in and whatnot if you're not if you're not if you're not uh being diligent right and you're being idle because if you're not working for the heavenly father you're working for somebody right so let me uh let's keep going it says a yoke and a collar do bow the neck so are tortures and torments for an evil servant so yeah so if you have an evil servant what's an evil servant an idle servant man a sluggard you understand so if you're a sluggard, you know, the heavenly father, yeah, he has, he has tortures and torments for you, right? Because we read in the book of Sirach as well, you know, all of these judgments and these, these evils, they're, 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 they're made for the, uh, for the wicked, man, right? Verse 27 says, send him to labor that he be not idle for idleness teacheth much evil, right? So when you are idle, man, you know, you're getting into a lot of different mischief because you're not occupied and what's profitable and what's that serving the heavenly father while you have a shot. It says, set him to work as it is fit for him. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. So, you know, as sometimes the Heavenly Father, you know, he'll put on our spirit to, to do more. And then some guys, man, they just they just don't want to do it. So they become idle. And then when you become idle, man, you know, uh, eventually the Heavenly Father will give you over to it. Let me go ahead and read this in the book of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 12. And you know what? I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start at Luke 13, all right? Because eventually the Heavenly Father, if you are an idol, right? The Heavenly Father will just, uh, he'll just let you loose, man. Luke, six, Luke 13 and 6. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read this. It says, and he also spake this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. All right, so... Uh, I believe this is supposed to be in red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, right? Basically, just you know, giving a parable about a, a, um, a man who had owned a fig tree, and he every time he came to that fig tree, he was basically like disappointed, right? And it says, and he came and sought fruit thereon, so he was looking for fruit. And what's the fruit that, that we should bear? You know, you know, uh, doing doing the work for the heavenly Father, you know, making sure we're we're abounding in, in, in the spirit, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Doing the work that's required of us, making our bodies a living sacrifice, going out on the highways and byways, making video epistles. Those are the those are the fruits, right? That 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 the heavenly father is looking for, man. Those are the things that are pleasing unto him, right? It says, and found none. Verse 7, it says, Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Right? So, and it says, verse eight, it says, and he answered and said unto him, I don't want to let it alone this year. So I shall dig about and dung it. All right. So the one, I, I believe the one, the one farmer guy, he was like, hey, you know, I don't want to please if you just give it one more year. 
right? And that's and that's what happens sometimes. The Heavenly Father will stall you out. You know, the Heavenly Father, you know, see, all right, this guy ain't been on point. You know, he gets stalled out a little bit, right? And then, you know, and then when he gets stalled out, you know, he's still, he's still, he's still being a uh, lukewarm and idle, man. So let's see what happened, right? It says, and he answered, said in verse eight, and he answered and said unto him, out of one, let it alone this year till I shall dung about it, dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, so being it, mean it, saying if it bear fruit, all right, then it's good. It's going to be, that's profitable, right? And if not, then after that, thou shall cut it down. So if you continue to be in an idle spirit, the heavenly father is going to cut you down, man. Right? So we got to be on point, man. We can't be idle because I don't want to be cut down. Right? I don't want to be cut down at all. Let me grab this in the book of uh, Cyrus. Sirach so chapter 39, I believe it's 39 and 28. Nah, damn, unless a man hold himself. Nah, that's not that one. Hold on. I said, hey, man, hold himself. Uh, Sirach 27 and 3. Sirach 27 and 3. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of how Adawan, his house shall soon be overthrown. So what does that mean? That goes right in the correlation with Luke chapter 13, right? Unless you're being diligent in this ministry, right? Eventually you're going to be cut down like that fig tree that didn't bear any fruit. So if you're not bearing any fruit, right? And, and, and of course, fruit looks different for everybody depending upon your lot, right? Because brothers have different lots. You have some teachers, you have some prophets, some helps, right? So everybody's lot looks different. You know, and what you give and what type of fruit, but whatever lots you're, 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 you know, you were given, you want to be profitable in that. You want to be bearing fruit, doing the things that, you know, you, you know, you should be doing, right? Because that's the things that, are, that the Heavenly Father is going to delight in. So let me go ahead and grab this in Luke 12 and 30, 35 and read this in the NLT. It says, be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. What is that lamp? That fire, man. All right. So you read about that. Uh, I believe that's Matthew uh 25 yeah i believe that's matthew 25 when it talks about the uh the uh the 10 virgins man so you want to keep that uh that that your lamp burning because you won't you don't want to be as the uh the five unwise virgins who didn't have you know oils for their lamps and have them trimmed and ready and ready for the marriage right so it says verse 36 as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. Right. So that's how we want to be. We want to be at the door. That servant looking in the window. Oh, look like he coming. Let me be right at the door. So as soon as he about to knock at the door, I already open it right before he even knock. Right. Verse 37. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth. He himself will seat them. Put on an apron and serve them as they sit and eat. That's beautiful, man. And this is Yahweh Shai, you know, talking about himself, man. Because you know that Yahweh Shai, this is a parable, but Yahweh Shai is talking about the elect. And when and when Yahweh Shai comes back, right? He may come in in the middle of the night or just before dawn. But whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. So you want to be ready because the Yahweh Shai can come at any time, night, day, any time of the night, any time of the day. Right. So it says, but whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would not permit his house to be broken into. He must also be right. Verse 40. He also must be ready at all times. The son of man will come when when least expected. So Yahweh Shai is going to come when least expected, man. You don't know. A thief in the night, man. All right? You don't know when a thief going to come. He just pop up. And that's the point, man. So we want to be, we want to make sure we're ready. We're, we we want to make sure we're in that uh, that ready state of mind. That spirit of uh, always doing, man. All right? Let me go ahead and grab that in Matthew 24 and 45. Right, it's uh, let me grab that in KJV Matthew 24 and 45. It says, Who then, right? Matter of fact, verse 44, this goes perfect. Therefore, be also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Right, who then is a, is a faithful and wise servant whom his Ottawan have made ruler over his household 
to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Right? So that's the point, man. We want to be as that good and faithful servant that's ready for Yahweh Shah when he comes, man. Right? And go ahead and grab this in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. It says, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. All right, we don't want to be under tribute. We don't, we, don't, we don't want to be, you know, at the bottom. All right, we want to be the ones ruling, you know, joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. All right. And to do that, you got to be diligent, man. Putting in your brick, being ready, stay watching. And how, how does that look like to watch, man? Looking at the different things that are happening in the news and the media. All right, correlating them things, you know, with the uh, with the scriptures. You know, seeing that, okay, yeah, this lines up with that. Okay, then this means that Yahweh Shah got to be on the way. You know, unlike other servants who aren't, you know, doing that, they, they believe that, you know, Yahweh Shah is delaying his coming. So they're not really looking. They're not really, they're not correlating the things that are happening right now with the scriptures and prophecies and deeming that, okay, Yahweh Shah is on his way. They think they got a lot of time left. No, it ain't a lot of time here, man. This thing about the this thing about to go. Right? So those servants, you know, they're not gonna be ready when Yahweh Shah comes because if they were, they will be doing now. Right? They would do they would be doing everything possible to make sure their light, their slocky, their lamps are still burning and trimmed with much oil. So that way they'll be ready when our uh when our groom comes, man. Yahweh Shah. Come, man. So let me go ahead and I'm going to end off on this scripture right here. Of course, this is the go-to. Revelation 3 and 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot. I do. I like I would, thou were cold or hot. So then because thou were lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I would spew thee out of my mouth. All right, so of course, man, this is Yahweh Shai speaking again, man. Basically just saying that you're not cold. You're not hot, so you're not all the way uh, wicked. Because if you were on the uh, uh, all, all the way to the left, he could use you for wickedness, right? It's like he could use you for, you know, uh, things on the left hand side, it's like you, and, and and on the right side, he will use you for righteousness. Because on the left side, he uses Esau as what? As a sword, right? To render his judgment. So it's not like wickedness, but it's like he uses Esau for for a purpose, huh? Right? So if you were on the left hand side. You know, if you were all the way, you know, in the world, you know, you, you know, he could he could use you for that. But since you just straddling the front, uh, straddling the fence, you know, you thinking that you in it, but you but you really not. You faking it. You faking the funk. The heavenly Father just gonna spew you out, man. And I'm telling you, that's a bad fate. That's something that you don't want. So for brothers, you know, sisters, Akim Akwath, you know, you want to be diligent in this thing. You want to make sure you're on point. You're not being idle. Because I'm telling you, man. Yahweh Shah is coming. He is on the way. So, you know, make sure you, you, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Continually, man. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end off there. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem, Ha'rakakwadash. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham. To all you sincere-hearted, Akim and Akwa. Shalom.